So right now your portfolio is probably composed of a lot of individual stocks, um, maybe some cash, maybe some bonds, maybe some alternative asset classes. Um, uh, those are all individual securities which have a lot of idiosyncratic risk, that is company-specific risk. So in this uh, assignment, I want you to start thinking about uh, your portfolio as a collection of exposures to different factors or to different risks. Um, we're going to try to get rid of the idiosyncratic risk inherent in individual securities um, by using exchange-traded funds to, uh, to gain exposure to different risk factors. So um, in this assignment, I want you to mimic your portfolio using ETFs. So let's just walk through a, a quick example. So suppose your portfolio is um, uh, maybe 50% cash and 50% value stocks, um, maybe in particular large value stocks. Well, um, I want you to use ETFs um, to mimic that cash position. Now, uh, a, a good substitute for cash that actually has a, a decent return is maybe to use a, um, a, a risk-free treasury um, ETF or a, a U.S. treasury ETF. Um, I'm, I'm going to point you in the direction of Vanguard ETFs um, simply because that's what I use in my personal portfolio. And um, I found, I've been pleased and they have low fees. Um, so on Vanguard's ETF, they have a, a very comprehensive selection of ETFs. And one of them uh, happens to be maybe intermediate term treasury ETF. That might be a good uh, substitute for cash in your portfolio. Um, or maybe if you're really concerned about inflation, you could get these short-term inflation-protected securities. But uh, the idea here is to find a substitute for uh, the cash position of your portfolio. Now, let's say the other half of your portfolio uh, currently is composed of stocks that uh, you could consider uh, value stocks and are, are large. Well, uh, Vanguard ETFs, they have um, a, a substitute for that. Um, if you go down to the U.S. Stocks ETF, uh, you can find a value ETF. If you click on it, you'll be able to find out more information about exactly what is inside the ETF um, as soon as it loads. Um, so in this particular uh, ETF, you can see the top 10 holdings here. They're all very large companies that are considered value companies. You can also see uh, the composition of this portfolio, uh, the different industries, and um, how much those industries are, are, are part of this ETF. And you can see right here that this particular ETF has 344 different stocks in it. Now, in your portfolio, you might have three, five, ten, and even with those, um, even with having multiple securities, you're still bearing some idiosyncratic risk. With 344 securities, a lot of that idiosyncratic risk is going to be diversified away, and you'll just be left with exposure to value stocks. So to just recap, what I want you to do is to evaluate your portfolio. Think about commonalities in the different securities. Do you have a lot of value stocks, a lot of growth stocks? Do you have a lot of technology exposure? Do you have a lot of um, uh, consumer cyclicals or chemical companies? Uh, whatever it is, look at what you have and try to replicate it using different ETFs. Um, you can use any uh, brand of ETF. Vanguard works for me, uh, but if you want to use another company's ETFs, go for it. Um, just uh, to keep going through, so Vanguard has a lot of U.S. stock ETFs um, uh, with large ones, small ones, mid-sized ones. They have some international ETFs, so perhaps your portfolio has a lot of, of global companies that have uh, international operations and you want to maintain that exposure. Um, and then they also have sector specific. So uh, perhaps you have a lot of consumer discretionary stocks and you're, uh, you want to replicate that. Well, this ETF right here has a lot of consumer discretionary stocks. Um, just digging into it a little bit more. Um, it's a sector specific stock, as they say. Um, 
and you can see that they have a lot of, of consumer facing stocks. Uh, here's the industry again, and this one has 327 different stocks in it. Once again, this is to get rid of that uh, idiosyncratic risk by taking advantage of uh, diversification.